you just give us a sense of how this technology compares to other existing, Im whatever few existing emergency sanitation options are out there? And secondly, can you just give us a sense of the cost? I mean, I know you just said the energy consumption is quite high. Just to give us a sense of how much it costs to develop these mobile units. Thanks. Okay. Um, we're now in the in the research phase and in the testing phase, so it's difficult to say something on the costs. And we really have to optimize also the energy consumption. So what we did was basically uh, under non-optimized conditions. So I, I have no data now on the cost, but the energy is quite high. And we also have to look about alternative energy sources. The whole approach is meant uh, for the early stages of, of emergencies, so that we really can prevent uh, uh, diseases happening. Um, so especially uh, the, the um, organizations active in emergencies were asking for technologies that they could use because when you have an emergency and uh, when people, uh, a lot of people gather, they, they dig the pits and they fill up very rapidly and they really don't know what to do with the fecal sludge. So that's a bit the con, so at the moment they basically have no technology. So what you see is that the sludge is being discharged uh, at, at the dumping site or in the sea or in the river with all the associated problems. Um, on the longer term, where it's a more stable situation, then indeed you can think of other technologies like uh, maybe making some sewers, uh, putting some wastewater treatment plants, so get more organized. And those technologies are then more sustainable indeed. So this is more for the first phase um, or have when you have in short term a lot of people gathering. Yeah. We don't have any other questions. Thank you. If you don't have any other questions for now, let's move on to the uh, to the other set of presentations. Dr. Pulat Karimi, who will talk about uh, water accounting, and Pulat is also from the uh, IEG Delft. Basically, uh, thank you very much for being here in this session. I'm super excited to talk about this work and this specific for this specific audience for the reason that you will see later. So my my topic, uh, the topic that I'm presenting is about water accounting and how this tool can help us to manage water scarcity better or as a supporting tool for managing water scarcity. We have heard a lot about water scarcity, right? I mean, there are many different de definitions of water scarcity. Some people take it as a liter per capita. So we, mostly on water management side, take it for the entire water availability. And this is the map that shows water scarcity in a definition that international water management has, EMI. So this is a map showing the countries that are, I mean, in red are the countries that they have physical water scarcity meaning that uh, the, it's, it's the, it's the water is not there physically. And the countries in yellow are actually those are suffering from economy water scarcity. It's another sort of water scarcity that where you have water, but you do not have infrastructure and money to actually gain that water. Example would be Nepal is a country with a lot of rainfall, but it's still a water scarce country because they cannot utilize it. Or another example is Ethiopia. So. This is where this slide is what I have been repeating in many of my uh, presentations because it's one of it shows it's the whole story of water scarcity. It's from the Jordan River Basin. It's a study by the by EMI back in 2000s, and it shows how Jordan River water balance looked like back in 50s. You see how much how simple it was, and then how much water went actually to the Dead Sea. And on the other side, you see 2000s. And that's how it has changed so much. And that has happened due to changes in uh, uh, other sectors. And there would be economic expansion. There would be other users coming in. And then you'll see by, by 2000, there's only small amount of water left to go to the Dead Sea. And the yellow is actually indicates the quality of water. And that is already 2000s. So I'm sure if somebody updates this figure for today, that is even worse. To me, this picture typifies all the, na the, the nature of this problem that we have. Water scarcity hits us everywhere. It's not just a drinking water. It's, just, it's not just agriculture. It's the whole system that's getting affected with it. 
and they're all connected. So in our work, we think what's re what is required to manage water scarcity is to have the information, it to know that how much water is actually missing, how much water sh do I need in which sector, and that's where we come in. Our work is focused on giving that information, especially in data scarce areas. Say, I don't know about Jordan, but many countries struggle with data. Data is not there, data either not accessible, or if it's there, it's not reliable. So what we have been focusing on is to see how we can move from that, what we have, the empty data centers, to something that is actually presentable, and then we can make decisions based on. And for that, we are moving towards using satellite data for this. And this is a new opportunity, and it's improving quite a bit. It's just what we talk today, today, that would be even better tomorrow. So in that sense, to me, it's the future. It's, it's a resource that is good already, and it will be even better tomorrow. So I think it's a smart investment to move towards utilizing on that to, to kind of fill that gap. If I show this video from NASA, just, just look at the type of data that you can fr get from, the, from, from satellite. So basically, this is rainfall monthly, and it's going to focus on Nile Basin. So for different months, we have different amount of rainfall. It's with spatial distribution, with the estimations. And this is for, for evapotranspiration, which is the main consuming factor in water sector. And this is on soil moisture. You see how it changed throughout month. And we have the vegetation index here that shows how, I mean, the greenery of the landscape. And at the end, the storage, where we, we, you know a lot about storage in, in Jordan. You, lo you use a lot of groundwater, and that is changes of the groundwater storage. So that kind of data is available now. And we are proposing to move this data in a host that we call it water accounting. And then we put all these data together to make some, uh, some water accounts. It's more like, think about finance, financial account. When you want to do some wise investments or you want to manage your money well, you have to account for your money, right? That's what all we do. I mean, we, we know how much income we have and we plan for it. It's the same for water. We have to have that system for water because water is an important commodity that has value these days. And that will help us to move on to informed decisions. And that will be used by different players in the game, by policymakers, by managers, by water planners and donors, and also the end users to inform their decisions. And don't forget that this is all one big game. We are all in the same ship here. And this is the river basin that you see. I mean, if you just map the SDGs on top of this river basin, you see how it's all integrates together. So to show you an example from the, for, for, for how the, this works, I show you the quickly the Nile Basin. This is the type of map you get for the Nile Basin from remote sensing on ET and precipitation on biomass production. And these are the type of information that we produced using water accounting. It was changing, no? Yeah, but it's OK. Oh, that one is not there. OK, so the, the previous sheet was actually, the, this is the flows. All these data come out of remote sensing now. And you can break this down to sub-basins. So this is for entire Nile. And then you can have it for the, all the 15 sub-basins of the Nile. And then you can relate that even to the how much is beneficial of this out of this entire use. You see that through biomass production. And then you connect this use to benefits. That's the, at the end of the day, that's all we're concerned about. How we are using, how much profit, and how much productivity we have. So these are the other sheets of the water accounting. My colleague Gonzalo would have a bit more to talk about the, the, uh, some other sheets. This is agriculture sheet. This is the utilized flow, and so on. We have almost 10 sheets for water accounting. And I would like to close with this point that satellite remote sensing offers a very good and reliable data source these days. And it is not only that it's out there. It's actually good because it's verifiable. Everybody can go and do the same process and get the same data. And when you work in a transboundary basin, 
That's a gem. You know it. I mean, if you can, uh, if if all country can agree on data source, we can have a good discussion because we cannot refute the data to be, to begin with, and then. War Accounting Plus, the framework that I just briefly showed you, puts this all this data into some structure that then we can get some information out of the data. And also, it helps to identify issues, propose solutions, because you can see through the accounting that where you have low pro productivity, where you are producing less benefits. And we can make those decisions based on the accounting. And also, if you have proposed like interventions, say somebody has desalinization, some there is a wastewater management or a treatment uh, coming in, or agricultural land retirement. All those policies and intervention can be examined through water accounting framework to see their impact. And to close that, we would have one uh, upcoming training on water or workshop on managing water scarcity, where we focus on water accounting and uh, introduce it more thoroughly towards end of this week in Amman. Thank you very much. Let's move on uh, to the to uh, to the Gonzalo's uh, Dr. Gonzalo's presentation because I think it's very closely linked and then perhaps we can take a few questions from the uh, from the audience. Is this your computer, right? It's almost right. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Gonzalo Espinosa. I'm part of UNESCO IHE. I work at the Integrated uh, Water Systems and Governance Department. And as uh, Pulad introduced the concept of water accounting, uh, I'm also uh, part of the water accounting group at UNESCO IHE. And I'm going to show you uh, what we are doing uh, in this field. So um, if you, after this session, you want to uh, start using water, uh, remote sensing data, satellite data, and water accounting, uh, where should, uh, should you start? Uh, so in uh, Water Accounting Group in UNESCO IHE, we're developing uh, the tools, the data access uh, to all the satellite data and, uh, and models so that you can include it in your workflow or in your day-to-day um, uh, day -to -day life and make it easier for you to, to do that. All the tools that we develop are open source, are freely available on the internet. So um, that's the advantage of uh, using open source data and models. So as a brief introduction, um, uh, well, uh, Bulad already introduced what is water accounting. So it's a water management tool to describe uh, quantitatively the water resources in the basin. Uh, so we want to know uh, uh, where is the water, uh, what are the stocks, uh, similar to in a financial um, account, and where is the water uh, going, or how we can plan it uh, better to uh, make better decisions and more informed uh, and propose uh, better solutions. Um, so in water accounting, we trace the water from the sources to the sinks, and uh, it's heavily based on uh, open source, remote sensing data, and models. Um, it's a way to create reports, uh, standard reports in the 10 standardized sheets uh, to report back to the stakeholders or um, to the water management of the situation of the water resources. And we quantify all the fluxes and flows and stocks in a given basin for a given period of time. So this is uh, an example of the uh, water accounting sheet number five. Uh, Pulat mentioned uh, some of the other sheets. Um, this is about surface water. Uh, this was for the Nile River Basin. Mm -hmm. So each one of the lines are, <coughs> sorry, one of the tri um, tributaries or branches of the Nile River. And we have the description of the flows. So in this way, we can estimate how much water there is and how we can distribute it or allocate it or use it. <coughs> so the topic of the uh, presentation is the, um, is the calculation of highly high resolution runoff. Oh, thank you. <coughs> oh. 
So <coughs> also in the water accounting group at UNESCO HG, who are creating um, this tool called WaterPeaks uh, to calculate a high, re uh, high resolution distributed runoff on a monthly basis with a resolution of 250 meters in space <coughs> to create uh, sheet number five to know uh, where is the, uh, the water going and how we can use it. So it's based on the idea that all the data will uh, have to come from remote sensing and we have stations on the ground that we can validate the model. So we, uh, as a brief introduction to the methodology, uh, on the left side we have the precipitation, it's the main input of the water, we have evapotranspiration and change in storage and that's equal to the flows uh, in the basin. And the data input, we have different models and sources uh, with re different resolution that uh, at the moment is one of the limitation. But uh, we can combine all these different models to estimate runoff. And this is an example of the output. So we generate monthly uh, runoff maps uh, for, for any, any basin. In this case, uh, it's for the Jordan Basin and uh, we have runoff, surface runoff and base flow. And we notice that we have a, um, uh, this, uh, f this French um, in the in the Jordan Basin that is one of the uh, is the one of the limitations that we have that if the model input or the satellite data has some issues, um, this translates into the code. So we also have tools to <coughs> we have tools to um, bias correct with the stations uh, on the ground to make the model improve. <coughs> um, this is an example for the Litani River Basin in Lebanon. And we compare it to the uh, water balance made by the USAID. And the, <coughs> and the values that match really well. So uh, we're, um, we are developing a model that is um, making good approximation. So, um, and here we are in talks to the Litani River Authority to <coughs> to implement this model in uh, for their calculations into the uh, into the inflow to the Coron Lake. And this is a, an example of the maps that we get. Also, uh, on the left we have the salt water index from satellite data. Uh, the percent saturation on the soil, and on the right we have the change in soil moisture storage from our methodology. <coughs> so in summary, uh, the water accounting framework is a water management tool that uh, provides a lot of relevant information for water managers, and is based on remote sensing data, global data sets, and open source data. Um, uh, Water peaks is a pixel-based water balance that we can use to estimate uh, uh, high resolution runoff. And uh, we're gonna validate the methodology soon. And also we're planning to uh, do a sensitivity analysis on how we change the input from a uh, different model, uh, from precipitation, for example, how it changes uh, the output. And just as a reminder that <coughs> that there are two uh, web pages that you can access to get all the tools. and and all the data. Okay. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Gonzalo. That's uh, yeah, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> please, uh, please drink your water. Uh, <laughs> your drinking water. So, uh, <coughs> Dr. Deep, in the in the back, you have a question. Thank you. I'm Diva Abdul Ghafoor from Palestine. Actually, I have a comment concerning, concerning first of all, uh, the water scarcity that you mentioned for uh, Jordan River Basin. It's actually suffering from water shortage problem, not water scarcity, especially when we talk about Jordan River Basin. Because, uh, I mean, we don't, we don't want to blame the, um, the climate and everything, but for Jordan River Basin, it's a human man-made ma man problem, so it's a water shortage rather than water scarcity. Uh, concerning the, the advanced um, tools that you are talking about and uh, remote sensing, uh, I think this is um, such like this uh, experience 
conducted on large scale. Uh, there is uh, some concern about calibration and validi uh, validation on, on, uh, on large scale. So I think it would be b better to, uh, to have like a, an example or a case study on a small catchment area rather than a big catchment area. Thank you. I think, um, as you know, this is a very arid region, uh, and uh, you know, um, most of the countries are moving towards non-conventional water resources. And uh, uh, in your calculation, you are talking about uh, water accounting for conventional water resources more than non-conventional water resources like desalination, which are not going to be appearing in, in your lab, you know, most sensing or treated wastewater. So, I don't know how you're going to be embedding that type of information within your system so you can make better decisions. And the other thing is the resolution. I was worried about the resolution. It's, uh, it's very large pixels. <laughs> I don't know how, how accurate you, you can be. Uh, so the first question was um, about the desalinization, for example. Um, yeah, and it's included in the water accounting model. So um, in the first uh, sheet, the water resources base is included. If you have an input for desalination, how how the system is going to behave and uh, how can you plan it. The second one, um, the large pixels were uh, was an example of the limitations that currently we have, and it was mainly in uh, soil moisture. Uh, the other uh, ET we have in 200 meter, uh, we have data sets in 250 meters, so it's good. And currently we are doing research on how to downscale, for example, soil moisture data with um, proxy variables like NDVI or leaf area index. And the previous question was, um, um, oh yeah, the small catchment area. Uh, so in Litani, we also are working in the Beka Valley, and uh, we did a water productivity uh, analysis, uh, the, and we have good results at the plot level. So uh, we could, uh, we were able to identify which farmers are performing better in terms of water productivity cubic meters uh, per kilogram of uh, well, uh, of production, so even at the farm level, and we have the we can see the division of the roads. Uh, too bad that I don't have the image, but um, uh, we are improving. I think we're getting there. And the point that Pulat made earlier that this is a future we're heading in this direction, and we I and the data is so it's only improving. It's not getting any worse. I think is is a key of um, the use of satellite data and imagery in in the future.